about our battle. Amen. Amen. It's essential. Leave it up to him. He'll take care of it. In the past two years, about 50 Sioux Falls families have heeded Brother Meade's call. They've moved to northern Florida to be closer to their leader and await the end of time. They hold their weekly worship in this hotel. We attended a service, but were not allowed to bring our camera in. End time members would not talk to us, but each one made note of our presence as they left. They live in Columbia County. Most have settled in Lake City, a rural community of about 9,000. It seems that they are very uh, quiet and tend to their own business and are well accepted by the community. And time children don't play with kids outside their group. And they don't go to public schools. They are educated at home by their mothers. When it began three years ago, we had 30 students enrolled in home education. Last year, that number doubled to 60. This year, it's doubled again to 120. Melrose Park Elementary, the school many end-time children would attend if public education weren't prohibited by the group. The state assures these kids get a quality education. The end-time kids don't have that guarantee. The law in Florida is written so vaguely that at the end of the first year, after the parents have notified us that their children are enrolled in a home education program, they are required to assess the student's progress one of several different ways. At that point, if the de determination has been made that the student has not made progress, they still have one more year in a home education program before the determination that they have not made progress a second time is made and at that point they have to enroll them in a school program. So there are two possible years that a student's not making any educational progress whatsoever. Welcome to Southwood Acres. One third of the homes in this subdivision are owned by end timers. This is Brother Meade's house. He bought it in 1984. Two years later, the exodus from Sioux Falls began. Second in charge, Gary Cook, lives across the street from Meade. Next in line, Meade's son-in-law, former Sioux Falls realtor Charlie Sparks, lives two houses away. Our attempts to talk with Meade and his followers were unsuccessful. We were not welcome. I'm just telling you, I, we don't want any trouble. Neither do we. Okay, then take your camera and point it the other way. Now really. That's just the way it's got to be, folks. Neighbors of the end timers say the group has made it clear they are outsiders. To me, they don't add anything when they won't associate with us. They're taught that we're the devils. Most residents here in Southwood Acres refuse to talk to us on camera. They say they fear retaliation from their end time neighbors. But there is some uneasiness here. At least one man has armed himself in fear of the unknown. And there is growing criticism about their neighbors' practices and beliefs. Some of the, the, the beliefs, and, and, and this is my word, are, are primitive, uh, especially in a, in, a, in a close society. Little Michael Bamer lies alone in a Florida cemetery. Flowers left by a stranger adorn his grave. The four-day-old baby boy died last month. He died after his parents' attempts to heal him through prayer failed. That violated some, the conscience of, of many people in this town. Uh, I, don't, I haven't talked to anybody that, 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 that feels that that, that, was, that was correct to, to them, for them to, for, for, these, for these people and, and this family to, to allow this child to die. I don't think I could tolerate having a neighbor that uh, would have a, a death in a with a child simply because they didn't go to the doctor. I, I couldn't tolerate that, no. I think any time there's uh, the element of the unknown, uh, we tend to be suspicious and distrustful and fearful. You did pray over your son. Oh, yeah. Did you each raise your hand in this corner? Two weeks ago, a Florida judge held a coroner's inquest. 
to determine if Gail and Kelly Bamer were criminally negligent in the death of their newborn son. The former Sioux Falls couple prayed over their baby three days before calling for help. Did you have faith that God would heal your child irrespective of what his condition might be? I had faith, maybe not enough The Bamers thought their son had a simple nosebleed. Doctors say the infant bled to death and testified the death could have easily been avoided with a routine shot of vitamin K. It is a, a mandatory procedure in a hospital setting to give vitamin K to the newborn infants, no matter what, no exception. The judge ruled there is no legal basis for felony charges against the Bamers. Misdemeanor charges could be filed, but have not. I have uh, tremendous respect for religious freedom and religious plurality in this country and the, the right to practice one's religious beliefs as one sees fit. On the other hand, I'm very disturbed as a prosecutor, as a citizen, and as a parent that a person's practice and exercise of their religious beliefs might deny a person who is incapable of making decisions uh, not only the right to make those decisions, but the right to life itself. Have you on occasion assisted in the delivery of babies? On approximately how many occasions? Would it be as many as 50? Could it be more than 50? Could it be as many as 100? The woman who helped deliver the baby in the Bamer home, another end time member, is on six months probation for practicing midwifery without a license. I don't have any assurance that the decisions that they would make in the future would be any different from the decisions that they have made uh, in connection with the death of this child. Many feel Michael Bamer died needlessly and fear other babies will as well. Since Michael's death, there have been three other end time births in Lake City. None have received the common vitamin injection that would have saved Michael's life. I would uh, assume that at, at some point in time, the, the community's tolerance uh, for this type of activities uh, would, uh, would be considerably less if, if there is a history uh, or a pattern uh, emerging here. It won't stop. It's like watching a nightmare that will continue to unfold. And I think there will be more and more death. If she were alive today, Libby Marie Cook would be 10 years old. Libby was one of the first of seven babies in the Sioux Falls End Time group to die. Like the others, there was no funeral when Libby died. It's only been in recent months that Libby's mother has been able to grieve her death and even visit her gravesite. For me, when I went to the cemetery, it was as though she had died two days ago instead of 10 years. I rejected those deaths as being okay or being right or being necessary. Um, I was told after Libby's death that by the niece that we had done the right thing because Gary was just getting started in his preaching and that um, the people would have seen that as a, as a sign of weakness had he gone for help. And as more end time babies died in Sioux Falls, Brother Meade's instructions became more specific. When it came to that point, then Meade told people that it was no longer feasible to allow um, children to die at home. That if things got really bad, everyone should get out and then hopefully the people would go in at least shortly before the death so that no one would be prosecuted.